All right, my people, welcome, welcome once again to IPOB Media, the place where we bring you the gospel of Biafra and the only channel where we bring you the latest news, information, update, trends, and everything you need to know about Biafra and the struggle for freedom. All right, if you are new to this channel, do well to subscribe and also click on the notification bell so that you don't get to miss out on any of our videos right and also don't forget to share share so that so many of our brothers and sisters will get to know what is going on as regards Piafra and the struggle for freedom all right all right going right into what we have for you today i want you i want you guys to see to you know to watch this video of the president the new president of Ohanes and Nibo, right Emmanuel Iwanya will talk about Nibo Biafrans right I want you to hear him talk about Nibo talk about everything happening about Biafrans right and the way this government has been maltreating Nibo okay and also he made a plea to Buhari to release our onion domaze nam the canal before the 29th of may okay the their president's inauguration right enjoy this video a leader is not the wisest man but he becomes the wisest the moment he is proclaimed because my wisdom now is the aggregate of all your wisdom together so i'm the wisest I'm not the strongest man, but from this day, my strength is aggregate of all your strength. So I'm the strongest. I'm not the tallest, but from today, my heart is all the height of Hebrews, men and women, young and old, put together. So I want to assure you that this job, I'm going to rise to the challenge. It's going to be a collective responsibility. I'm going to work with everybody, and I can be, can be rest assured that we are not going to fail. So today is a great day for all people to come together to stand behind him. You know that um, uh, going forward from here, you will be expecting a very firm and resolute leadership from the Ibo. He's not expecting anything from anybody at his age. He's uh, over 80 now. And uh, with that age, I, uh, who has been a multi-millionaire and billionaire over the years. So it's not somebody who can come down to uh, offer anything to abandon his people. Joining us on the morning show this morning to discuss his inauguration as the new president of Ohaneze Indibu and all he hopes to achieve during his tenure is Chief Emmanuel Iwanyawo. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, congratulations on your inauguration yesterday by the EMLB and your emergence as the President General of the Ioannis Indigo uh, worldwide. You had said in some of your remarks that uh, your ambition was to have been President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But now you are President General of Ioannis Indigo uh, worldwide. Well, President is President. How do you feel? And what are your plans? Well, thank you very much. I think, is that, uh, that Ruben? Is yes, that sir. Ruben talking to me? Yes, sir. Morning, sir. Okay, Ruben. Is uh, Ruben, um, well, well we're, we're all friends and colleagues. I'm glad to meet you once more. I want to thank Arise Television for this opportunity. And please, my best regards to our dear friend and colleague, Ndoka. And uh, Arise have done very well. Yes, uh, my plan, I'm now the President General of uh, Ones and Dibo. Uh, and that position conveyed on me the leadership of Igbos all over the world. We have Igbos everywhere. And I have made up my mind to do my best. I'll do, I'll do my best. And people who know me in the past, Igbos have confidence in me. Yeah. And in fact, I want to say that this is the first time it was produced somebody without acrimony. It was unanimous everywhere. 
I have, uh, I have, I have, I'm have overwhelmed, very, uh, very, very over completely by the love they have shown me, and that conveyed me a lot of responsibility in carrying out my duty. Yeah, those of your people who were at the venue yesterday when I was warning, notice that at least five states of our, five states of in Ibo land, the southeast, the governors and the deputies were there. And so, and the, for the first time, they all came together to support me and promised that at every stage they will be with me. So I'm quite happy and I don't have any doubt I will succeed. Well, congratulations once again, Chief Iwanyawo, on yes. your inauguration. I'd like thank to ask you, you. Thank you very, thank you, thank sir, you very much. For your priority areas, you have mentioned a few things that you'd focus on. Um, during your tenure as President General. I'd like you to please highlight some of them. I know what might, some of which might be of interest, might be you saying, saying that you would secure the release of uh, Namdi Kanu, and also the fact that you would be pushing for an additional state in the southeast area of Nigeria. Please, can you expound a bit more on your areas of priority during your tenure? Yes. Uh, Frankly speaking, uh, uh, there is a lot of problem in the country. You have a problem of youth unemployment, and all these things are creating a social unrest. Most of the problem we have in society today, you have a government killing people, kidnapping, uh, is a, is, 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 is a caused mainly by unemployment. So we are going to work together with the state governors in the southeast and this and Igbo land, those hotels, because you know southeast comprise not only the five southeasters but also rivers and uh, delta states. Of course, there are Igbos who are indigenous of other states like uh, Kwaibo, like uh, like uh, uh, like Benue, like even Kogi. Uh, like uh, uh, Baesa, uh, Cross River, and then uh, Igbos are indigenous, but the major Igbos live in three, seven states. Uh, we are going to look at possibilities of creating, facilitating employment opportunities. I have worked in, 19, in 1914, when Nigeria was amalgamated, Igbos were actually not uh, very highly developed. Igbos were quite far behind in all uh, aspects of development and civilization. But by 1960, when we had independence, Igbos came to the top. Top in education, top in uh, industry, business, top even in, uh, uh, in bureaucracy, top in mili military, science, and technology. So we were just and what cost it is because of education. Igbos embrace education. So we are going to look at it very seriously. We also, Igbo businessmen, we have never had political power seriously. We have been fighting to have political power. We have never. But yet, we, have, we are very highly advanced. If you come to Southeast and many parts of Igbo land, you see there is a lot of development. Most of this development is actually caused by our businessmen. So that is why I have decided I'm going to set up a council of education that will try to find what makes us strong in education. Find a council of business leaders to make sure our business will succeed. So these are very important. And then of course, there are some industries, for example, the Niger SEM at Unkalago, which was a major industry. Uh, with I, have, I will set up a committee to work and make sure it is uh, op op operate it to start production before the end of the year. And in fact, uh, the raw material for cement is uh, mainly limestone. We have a lot of it in uh, Igbo land. We have limestone in Imo. We have limestone in uh, uh, in uh, in uh, Abia, in uh, Enugu, in a I think even part of Anambra. So we are going to do that. And also, I commissioned a study to st on power. Power is a problem in Southeast. I commissioned a study on power, and they brought me very, very wonderful results that we can generate power very cheaply with coal. 
especially at this time when diesel is very costly. And you know, coal is there in, in abundance in Enugu State. So we, I have further investigated, and people told me that in fact the coal in Enugu is one of the best. It's better than most of the coal. There are many other parts of the world that you still use coal for energy. So we are going to uh, explore the possibility of uh, going mining the coal and then using it to get power, especially now. National Assembly has done a good job by removing power from the, uh, from, from making it in the concurrent list. So that's a very good job National Assembly did. We are going to take advantage, and when we do this, I think uh, our people will be very, very happy. Well, talking about Namde Kanu, it has to do with our security. Now, Nande Kalu uh, has been incarcerated uh, for quite a long time. Uh, we, 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 we actually, our position is that, uh, the, I mean, the, the law should take its turn, but the law, the, the, the court have released him. The court have released him, and uh, we, we, you know, Hanez and Debo, feel that there is no justifiable reason whatsoever to still keep him in prison when he had been released. So that is why we think he should be released. And in fact, it's a problem to us when he's not released because the young people who actually support him, there's no doubt about it that Nandi Kanu has a lot of support from younger people in this country. I mean, especially in our area, who feel that uh, they are not getting what they should get in Nigeria. But we have been telling them that things were doing well, that when they look at the aggregate, it was have done well in terms of business, in terms of economy and so on. Uh, so, but, so if Nandi Kanu is reduced, it's, really, it's going to reduce the, 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 the problems we have, in, the security problem in the Southeast. And it is my intention to organize what I call security summit, security, I mean peace summit. I want to have a peace summit, a peace summit where we will invite, Anese will invite all the groups that are agitating for one thing or the other. Then make them to embrace peace so that they stop killing and murdering people. So, and we can't organize a peace summit if Nam De Kanu is still in detention, because it will not work. And especially when his case has been examined by the court of the land, and the court have said that Nam De Kanu should be released. So it is the view of, of Hanez and Dibu, an appeal we are making to Bari to give us that gift of releasing Nam De Kanu before he leaves, on, before the expiration of his 29th of uh, 29th of uh, May. Okay, so sir. that is our desire, and that is our, our, our desire. Okay. Yes. Okay, sir. Abi, good to see you, and uh, con congratulations. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Please finish up your thoughts. Go ahead, sir. Yes. No, we wanted to say that it's an appeal we're making to the president. We, uh, we want to emphasize that the president, in fact, uh, we must acknowledge that the president has done quite a number of things for us. He has uh, the Niger Bridge is completed. Uh, the road from Enugu to Portacot is wearing a new look. And uh, recently, the president has done a thing that is very critical, not only to Hanes and Dibu, but to the nation. The approval of uh, dredging of uh, the Uguta leg to carry level, which is a joint project of Imo State government and the Nigerian Navy which have been approved by the federal government, is a very important thing to the Igbos. Igbos are very issues that uh, Buhari actually uh, loves us. We don't, time has passed when people say Buhari, we know he loves us. We know he loves us. And he has done a lot in other states because I've been in touch with the state governors. The state governors have told me most of the things Buhari have done for them. And for all this, I thank Buhari. But I'm appealing to Buhari to do me one favor, to do us one favor, to release Nam De Kanu before 29th of uh, May. If he does that, uh, 
we will now uh, be fully happy, we will feel, we will feel very happy. And every person is anxiously expecting this. When this is done, if we see anybody then killing or doing any evil, then we know it's a criminal. And the person will be treated like a criminal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And congratulations on this uh, mm -hmm. very important title. Like you're a man of many parts, and it's an honor, you know, seeing you because you straddle across many sectors. You are a publisher yourself with a champion. Uh, newspaper, you set up Iwayawu National, which is Heartland, you straddled into sports, you straddled into construction, you've seen it all as regards the economy, and you have something called staying power, you know, which are attributes of champions and great men like you. Uh, so congratulations for that. But a couple of things I'd like to ask you. Number one will be about what was said in Orca, and you have a chance to clear the air, because a lot of people asked, some people said, oh, you said you were about rascals. Some people said, no, you didn't say that. And there are video evidence to what you said. But I'd like you to clear the air, number one. Number two, I want you to also talk about uh, other things that are germane to the growth and progress of the Igbo people, which is about peace based on the violence that happened between Yorubas and Igbos and other ethnic groups in Lagos leading up to the elections, all right? That's another thing I want you to talk about. Thank I also want you. you to talk about this quest for an Igbo presidency, you know, that has long eluded people, that a lot of people thought Peter B was going to be, you know, the silver bullet for. So just three issues, if you can just pack them up together. But good to see you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you very much. Now, at Oka, uh, when uh, uh, the governor was celebrating his 25th year anniversary, I was the chairman. And then prior to that, I had had a lot of complaints from Igbos in Lagos. Igbos in Lagos, most of them were contemplating moving away from Lagos. They felt they were unsafe. They felt they were threatened. Some of their children, when they go to school, they, are, they don't say that they, if they say they are Igbos, they receive hostility from people. And some of them, at times, even instead of this, they don't want to say that it was, they say, it was a very embarrassing situation. I had to uh, put a call to some of uh, prominent Yoruba leaders, who are my friends. And after discussing with them, I was convinced that there was no problem whatsoever between uh, Igbos and uh, Yorubas. But rather, people I described as political rascals. People are described as political rascals. Who are the people who were causing all those things? It's not, they're just doing it for personal motives. Nothing to do with the relationship between Igbos and Yorubas, which have been very good. So I now, as a leader, told the Igbos, don't be afraid, stay in Lagos. Yorubas are friends, they are brothers, they have been with us over the years. Right from the time of uh, Chief Awolowo. Chief Awolowo was a person who showed love for Igbos. When he went, was running for presidency, he chose an Igbo as his running mate in those days. And there are many things he did. Even myself, as a young man, I used to visit him. Even when I started not showing ambition to presidency, I went there, he blessed me. I regarded up, up, up him and his father I mean, his wife, Anna, as, as, a, as my parents. Even their Tokumbo the uh, was uh, quite close to us, our family. And even the publisher of uh, one of his sons, the publisher of the Tribune, we were very close. Yorubas are very close to us. The later Biola was one of my best friends and so on. We were very close uh, together. And in fact, it was, I knew, uh, I knew, I knew, uh, 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 Tinibu through Abiola, so I know Yorubas are close. I told our people they should step back. But I was surprised to see somebody manipulate the story. It was completely manipulated. There was the place I said the Yorubas are not at war with Igbos. Somebody just cut off, he just fixed, removed the thing. If you listen to that news, they've said there is a gap after Yorubas are. You will see a space, uh, political uh, rascal. Somebody just fix it. And it's a very serious thing in Nigeria, very dangerous, that people can manipulate stories, fix stories. 
media, I think our rise was there, Toka, uh, uh, the uh, uh, channel was there, many other media, they were there. And they recorded what I said was transmitted live. I never said, I didn't at all say Yorubas are political rascals. I never said that. I only said that those who, who are beating Igbos are, are political rascals. I never used the word Yorubas. But somebody wanted to create crisis between Yorubas and Igbos by putting, cutting off and forging the thing, fabricating it to put Igbos. And I'm very grateful to Senator Shehu Sani. He was the first person who, on his uh, media, released the information that the thing was fabricated. And he drew attention of uh, people to listen to the thing after uh, Yoruba's are, that he will hear some noise below. So somebody just fix it. And I am a, I'm using a rice television to appeal to Nigerians that this is dangerous, and to appeal to leaders, when they hear any story, because Nigerian fraud had reached advanced stage, when people can fabricate story with somebody's voice by bringing voices at different times and joining them together, somebody can be sent to jail, somebody can even be killed by this. I think it's not fair for Nigerians to get to this level of crime. It's very bad, so that is the point about it. However, uh, about what happened in Lagos, I think really it was the height of, uh, it was a very embarrassing situation. A very embarrassing situation when at this time, in, night, in, in the year 2023, after so many years of independence, that a Nigerian citizen will be told that, he, he, that we're in, a part, in a part of the country where he lives, where he has domiciled, where he has invested, that is no more his own issue go. You know, this is why I say they are rascals. You see, we don't, we are not going to take it serious because we know it's not the Yoruba view. Le Yoruba leaders have come out openly to, to criticize that action. And I would like the government to criticize it. And I'm, I also know Igbos in Lagos have told us that the governor of Lagos State has been good to Igbos. The governor of Lagos State has been good to Igbo, so he is not, he is not, he is not against Igbo in any way. In fact, I think he even appointed some Igbo in his uh, uh, cabinet and so on. So I don't think we have any problem. It's just political rascals. And politicians should be very careful about those who work for them. Some of them can destroy the country, and that is problem of leadership. At times, a leader is accused of uh, one problem or the other. At times, leaders are accused of fraud. The fraud is committed by their followers. So leaders in this country, what I advise them is, watch out those you recruit, either as helps, aides or thugs or whatever it is. If you get a murderer, a criminal, and make him a thug and he's working for you, then you have to take responsibility for whatever action, he, whatever crime he commits because the person is already a criminal. So I think what happened in Lagos should teach us a lesson that it's clear to everybody that they fabricated that story against me. It's clear that that's, that v, 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 uh, video, those who listen to it again, will see that it was fake. So people now should be very, very careful. So the lesson is Nigeria crime has advanced. We should avoid it. And then I, with the Ohanes and Dibu, have a lot of respect for Lagos State. Because over the years, since even before the amalgamation of Nigeria, Igbos lived in Lagos. Igbos have invested in Lagos. And Igbos, wherever they go, they don't cheat the natives. Igbos, when they want property, they buy. They settle down. Igbos in America, they buy properties in America, they live in America. Igbos in London, they do the same. There is no part of the world Igbos have been, uh, have been thrown away because they are, not, uh, they are not indigenous. Because people respect their right to property. When people will live oh. any, anywhere, they also contribute to the development of the place. And that is the culture of Igbos. That's why we are spread everywhere. So we believe that uh, this, that will be the last time. Yes, sir. Igbo will, well, that will be the last time yes, sir. anybody will come and tell an Igbo man that he should pack away from his house. Oh, oh. They pack away from the place he... 
Yes, so I believe you paid close attention to this video and listened to everything he had to say, right? You know what? I'm so happy that so many of our people are speaking up, right? It is time to, you know, stand on our ground and insist the release of our Onion Dumaze Nam de Kano. All right, if you're here to subscribe to this channel, do well to subscribe and also click on the notification bell so that you don't get to miss out on any of our videos when next we upload right and also don't forget to share share so that so many of our brothers and sisters we get to know what is going on god bless you as you do so